Hey there, I'm Sam from solar.com. And if you're wondering if solar panels are still worth it in California now that NEM3 is taking effect, then this video is for you. So get comfy, because today we're gonna take a deep dive into what makes solar panels worth it and how to maximize the savings of a NEM3 system. Roll it. Right, so the big question now that NEM3 solar billing is in effect for SDG&E, PG&E, and SCE customers is, is home solar still worth it? And the clear and obvious answer is yes, it's still worth it. And there's two reasons for that. Reason number one is home solar will still be able to provide substantial bill savings to homeowners even under NEM3. Number two is that bill savings, although it's nice, is not the only thing that makes going solar worthwhile. So let's dig a little deeper into each point to give you a broader context of what going solar under NEM3 looks like. First off, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The savings of a solar system under NEM3 billing are usually gonna be lower than a system under NEM2 billing. But here's perhaps the most amazing thing about NEM3. Even after reducing export rates, around 75% on average, <clears throat> it's still far cheaper to get your electricity from a solar system than it is to get electricity from a utility. In fact, solar systems in California, even under NEM3 billing, are still gonna provide bigger bill savings than almost any state in the country, although New York's doing its best to catch up here. The reason that home solar is still viable under NEM3 is because California is loaded with the two main ingredients that you need for solar savings sunshine and high electricity prices. Sunshine's not going anywhere and there's plenty of reasons to believe that high electricity prices from a utility provider aren't either. Simply put, California's electricity grid is a hot mess. It's based on a centralized model that's inefficient and outdated. The infrastructure is aging and the backup plan for when there are electricity shortages is to import really expensive and dirty electricity from peaker plants, sometimes states away. In fact, the CPUC itself said the grid has been operating in the same way for about 100 years. And for perspective, there's about 35 million fewer people in California when this model was created. Now attempting to untangle this mess and salvage an outdated grid system is expensive. And that cost largely gets passed down to utility customers in the form of rate hikes, sometimes several per year as shown in this chart of uh, the three rate hikes by the three California investor owned utilities uh, from 2020 to early 2023. So it's a pretty safe bet that utility rates will continue climbing in California, which fuels bill savings for home solar owners. Now, because we're nerds and we have the capability, we crunched the numbers on an average 7.6 kilowatt solar system under NEM3 billing using actual quotes, quotes generated through solar.com. What we found is that if utility rates continue climbing at around 5% per year, the owner of a system like this could expect to save $68,000 if they pay cash for the system, around $60,000 if they take out a 12 year loan, and around $53,000 if they take out a 20 year loan to get those lowest monthly uh, payments. Now, are those numbers as juicy as they could be under NEM2 billing? No, they're probably not. But let's not let perfect be the enemy of good here. Now, let's say <clears throat> home solar is Joey Chestnut in a Nathan's hot dog eating contest. That would make paying for grid electricity pretty much like a 12 year old walking off the street to join the contest. Now, Nate, <laughs> Joey Chestnut might eat 76 hot dogs to beat that kid, or he might eat 63 hot dogs to beat that kid. Either way, you're gonna pick Joey Chestnut every single time to win that contest. It's also important to remember that energy cost savings is just one of many benefits of home solar. And whether you save $5 total or $50,000 total, you can still look forward to increased home value, contributing to a smarter, cleaner electricity grid, reducing carbon emissions, having backup power for outages if you pair that solar system with battery, and you're also setting an amazing example for your friends, family, neighbor, and kids. 
Now, one of the coolest things about home solar is that it's contagious. In fact, a study of over 230,000 solar systems found that around a third of them were started as a result of a referral from a friend or neighbor. And perhaps even cooler than that is the fact that it doesn't matter if you're concerned about cost savings, climate change, or modernizing an outdated grid. Your solar system is addressing all those at once. Now, with all that said, if you're gonna install a home solar system, you might as well make the most out of it. So in the next half of the video, we're gonna go over five tips to increase the energy cost savings of a solar system under NEM3 solar billing. And the first tip is simply this, add battery storage. Now I did a deep dive into the benefits of battery storage in California here, so I'm not gonna to go too far into detail in this video, but here's the upshot. NEM3, the NEM3 policy was created in part uh, to encourage California homeowners to pair battery storage with their solar panels to make for a more resilient grid. In fact, the payback period and bill savings of a NEM3 system with battery storage are typically the same or better than a, than a NEM3 system without battery storage. And that's simply because instead of exporting your solar electricity for a lesser value than it was created, you're storing it and using it for later when elect to offset your electricity bills when prices are peaking. There are also certain hours in September when you can earn two to three dollars per kilowatt hour for exporting energy onto the grid. And our wonderful nerds at solar.com crunched the numbers on that too and found that you can earn around $200 a week for exporting during these windows. Now multiply that by four weeks in September per year and how many years your battery will be around, that adds up to some major savings. Let's not forget that battery storage also provides backup power for when the grid goes down and gives you energy independence from your utility provider. So let's consider battery storage our plan A for making the most out of an M3 solar system. But of course, battery storage just isn't in the cards for everyone and that's okay. Next, we're gonna go, go over some tips for making the most of a solar-only system under NEM3 solar billing. Given the lower export rates of a NEM3 system, the trick to saving money with a solar-only system is to use as much of your solar production as possible and export as little as possible. And battery storage makes that easy because you can hide it in your garage and pull it out later when you cook dinner. But without battery storage, there are still some tricks you can do to align your consumption and your production. First, there's a pretty simple strategy called load shifting. Now, the yellow section in this graph represents solar production and the purple part uh, represents your electricity consumption. Now, solar production peaks between, usually peaks between noon and 1 p.m. in California. And by shifting as much of that purple <clears throat> electricity consumption into that window as possible, you can avoid paying higher rates for that electricity in the evenings. Here are a couple ideas for shifting that electricity consumption to align with your solar production. Charge your EV during the day. Run your air conditioner between noon and 1 p.m. Do loads of laundry. Run the dishwasher cook meals with an electric stove or other appliances. Now, obviously this is a lot easier if you're at home during the day, but even if you're off at work, you may be able to program your EV charger, your thermostat, or your dishwasher to run during these hours. Now, in addition to shifting your electricity consumption earlier in the day, you can also shift your solar production a little later in the day to help them match up closer. And one simple strategy for this is to align your solar panels uh, on a southwest facing roof instead of a due south facing roof. Well, the direction that your solar panels face is called the azimuth angle and changing this essentially shifts when your peak production is. By going a little west, you're, you're facing towards the setting sun and you're shifting your production later in the day. Now, obviously this strategy uh, depends on your roof design and, and if you have any shading, but it's worth exploring if you have a NEM3 system that you want to maximize the savings of. And that brings us to our next tip, which I'll warn you sounds counterintuitive off the bat, but stick with me here. So the great nerds at solar.com did a deep dive on NEM3 export rates and they found that a solar system sized to offset 80% of your average electricity usage 
can provide better day one savings than a system designed to offset 100% of your electricity consumption. Now it's important to note here that this only applies to solar only systems under NEM3. If you have battery storage, it's typically best to size your system to 100% offset. But again, the general idea is with the solar only system is you wanna use as much of your solar production as possible. And with an undersized system at around 80% offset, a greater share of your electricity is used right on site and less of it goes to the grid and that can provide greater day one savings. Of course, this strategy can be combined with load shifting and facing your panels southwest to best align your solar production with your electricity consumption. Now the fifth and final tip for saving money under NEM3 is simply to go solar as soon as possible. And I know that sounds like a sales pitch, but hear me out. NEM3 features unique export rates for every hour of weekdays and weekends for every month of the year. And if you crunch the numbers on that, that comes out to 576 different export rates throughout the year. And basically what the IOUs have to do now is build a billing system to accommodate all those rates. And that's gonna take some time. Now it's hard to know exactly how long it's gonna to take to build these billing systems, but most estimates are at least several months and up to a year. And during that transition, NEM3 customers will be billed as NEM2 customers until that new software is built and ready to go. And better yet, our friends at CalSaw have pushed the IOUs to make it abundantly clear that there will be no reconciliation period once the new software is up and running. So that means the earliest NEM3 customers will likely be billed as NEM2 customers for several months or more. And then once the new software is set up, they won't have to pay back any of the extra savings they made during that transition period. Now, is this gonna completely pay off your system? No, but it can help soften the blow of being a NEM3 customer. At the end of the day, NEM3 solar billing is a lot like a monster in a horror movie. It's a lot scarier if you let it sit there and lurk in the shadows. But if you shine some light on it, two things become abundantly clear. One, home solar is still more than worthwhile in California, even with NEM3 solar billing. And number two, there are some strategies you can use to increase your savings of a NEM3 solar system. If anything, NEM3 exposed just how much more economical home solar is than buying electricity from a utility in California. Because even after a 75% reduction in export rates, California solar systems are providing more savings than any other state. If you'd like to learn more about NEM3 solar billing or increasing your savings, visit the solar.com learning center using the link below. Or better yet, team up with one of our energy advisors to compare actual quotes and see how much you could save uh, by going solar. I'm Sam with solar.com. Feel free to leave questions in the comment section below. Like this video if it helped you out and subscribe to this channel because we're just getting started.